This video is not meant to accuse, but to inform the public. This is all just information I have found online that I'm putting into a video. Also, a trigger warning, I'm going to be talking about kidnapping or child abduction, so please take care of yourself if that's a hard topic for you. Sofia Lucerno Juarez was born on February 5th, 1998. She had black hair and brown eyes, with a mole under one eye. Her parents were Maria Juarez and Andres Gutierrez Abraham. Her father was not in the picture and had actually never met Sofia and lived somewhere in Mexico. She lived in Kennewick, Washington with her mother, grandparents, and other family members as well. Sofia was a very shy but very loving child who loved to play with Barbie dolls and makeup. Sofia was very close with her grandparents, always wanting to go places with them whenever she could. On February 4th, 2003, just one day before her fifth birthday, Sofia's grandpa headed out the door around 8.30 p.m to a local corner store to get some milk and a phone card for calling Mexico. He asked all the kids in the house if they wanted to come and they all said no. Sophia changed her mind though and eager to catch up with him before he left, quickly asked her mother permission to go with him. Maria said yes if she hurried to catch up with him and gave her a dollar to spend at the store. Maria watched as Sophia left the room and heard the door close behind her. This was the last time she would ever see her daughter. Sophia was last seen wearing a red long sleeve shirt, blue overalls, purple socks, white Converse sneakers, and gold hoop earrings. She was not wearing a jacket despite the cold February temperature. Sophia was also missing her top four front teeth at the time of her disappearance. When Sophia's grandpa got back to the house at around 9.45 p.m. and Sophia was not with him, Maria immediately alerted police that Sophia was gone. She insisted that Sophia would not have willingly gone with the stranger without a fuss because of how shy she was. Kennewick Police Department treated this case as an abduction immediately when it happened, arriving just three minutes after receiving the call and knocking on every door and searching everywhere within a one to three mile radius of the home. Within the hour, even the FBI was there investigating. Over the next three days, the search party would come to include every officer in Kennewick, Washington, as well as hundreds of citizens, all hoping to find Sofia alive and well. Sofia's father, Andres, was contacted by police and was said to have been cooperative with police and ruled out quickly. They literally searched everywhere. Waterways, several neighborhoods around the area, and remote areas. They had the Coast Guard searching nearby rivers, and the city crew searched all the sewer systems. They even brought in cadaver dogs that were used on several occasions. There were about 800 leads and tips gathered by authorities, but they all led to dead ends. This included 144 out-of-the-area sightings that were all investigated. They had enough evidence for a search warrant on a couple of occasions, however. A Burbank, Washington home was searched. However, this was more in relation to other crimes committed eight years earlier rather than in relation to Sophia's case. Another house in the area was searched after a man made a suspicious phone call to an employee at a corner store. In the phone call, the man made a sexually explicit comment about Sophia. Police searched his home and found no evidence of anything to do with Sophia, but he was charged for telephone harassment, which I think is a good call because that's just creepy. Unfortunately, Sophia Juarez's mother would never get to have any closure on her daughter's disappearance. The case went cold, and Maria moved to Sacramento, California in 2008 and had a son. Only a year later, on January 10, 2009, a few days after the anniversary of Sophia's disappearance, Maria died of medical complications. There was no news about the case at all for years. That is, until April of 2021. On April 27, 2021, the Mexican YouTube channel Acaya Ya posted a video of some of their usual content. They sometimes go to the city and ask the local dwellers random questions. Sometimes these people are homeless people who dwell in the area, sometimes travelers just passing through, but it usually makes for some decent content. In this video, they talk to a woman who seemed to not want to talk to the guys, but later seems in a better mood and decides to play along. He asks her some random trivia-like questions, and she doesn't know the answer to most of them. 
He asks her a question about the solar system, and she gets a little flustered, saying at one point that she's not good with math and things like that. He then asks her what she'd like him to ask her, and she answers something based in reality with an irritated expression on her face. The interviewer sits down and asks the woman how old she is. She says she's 22 and mentions that she doesn't like celebrating her birthday and doesn't seem to like the topic much. She then says she'd like to say hi to her grandma and her grandpa who live on the other side, meaning the US, saying that if they're watching to come save her because she's been kidnapped. The interviewer laughs, saying he's not going to kidnap her, but she gets more serious and says that it's been ages since she's seen her grandparents. He asks what their names are and she suddenly goes blank. She says she doesn't know their names, but she knows for sure that she has grandparents and that if they knew where she was, they would come get her. She then says that she needs them to come get her from there because, to be honest, I don't know if I'm from here or if I'm from there. ¿Cuántos años tienes, Chanica? Tengo 22. 22 años y contando. Hay de cuenta que no, no puedo contar tantos porque soy muy, muy, muy bajo. Pero ya no tienes ganas de seguir cumpliendo, ¿o sí? Pues por el momento no, porque estoy muy ocupada. Ah, <risa> estás muy ocupada para seguir cumpliendo años, pues. De verdad, no me gusta cumplir años, me chocan cumplir años, de hecho. Le quiero mandar un saludo a mi tata y a mi nana. ¿Dónde? Si también de este programa quiero decirle que vengan por mí porque aquí estoy secuestrada. No, yo no te voy a secuestrar. <risa> pues dicen que estoy secuestrada, otros dicen que ando en Italia, otros en Japón. Si lo están viendo, vengan por, por su nieta, ¿va? Sí, vengan por su nieta. ¿Desde cuándo no los ves? Tengo muchos años que no los veo, tengo bastante tiempo que no los veo. Y no, me, no, tenía, no tengo tantas ganas de verlos, ¿verdad? Pero pues como ahorita ando así... Medio en, las, en los vicios, en las drogadicciones, pues tengo que... No, pero tienes que salir adelante. Sí, pero pues necesito apoyo de otra persona. ¿De quién? Pues como de mi familia, como quien dice, ¿verdad? Pero okay. verla... Este canal puede ser un medio para que encuentre a tu familia. Ocupo que vengan por mí, porque la verdad no sé de dónde soy, si soy de aquí o soy de allá. Estás en Culiacán, Sinaloa. Estoy en Culiacán, Sinaloa. She is currently located in Culiacán, Sinaloa, in Mexico. That look in her eyes... It just makes me want to believe her so much. If you look at the side-by-side -side comparison, she looks more like Sofia than even the age progress picture does. And Sofia did have a close relationship with her grandparents. Of course she would plead for them to come get her. I also want to point out that if this woman was taken when she was a young child, as in four or five years old, and then not taken to an environment where she had to go to school, then she wouldn't know those questions the guys were asking her in the video. Also, the fact that this girl seems to hate her birthday and Sofia was taken a day before her fifth birthday, it really seems to all add up. The Akai Yaya channel also had a TikTok account where they posted clips of their interview with the woman. Immediately, they were getting comments that she looked like a ton of missing girls from all over America and Mexico. In another video from the channel Os on YouTube, uploaded on March 8th, 2021, the same men from Akai Yaya channel explained that a police officer from the United States reached out to them about the Sofia Juarez case. They explained that the officer asked them to see if they can find her current whereabouts and to keep record of what they find. The men seem to take this task very seriously. In this same video, they ask around the same part of town as they found her the first time. A local vendor says she always sees her around, but has not seen her in about a month. This would mean that she hasn't really been seen in that area since the time of the initial interview. This woman also says that she often sees her wandering around, sometimes with nice clothing donated by others, and sometimes with rugged clothing or without shoes. They talk to a few other people who echo the, what the vendor said, that the woman w was a regular wanderer, but they hadn't seen her in a few weeks. This sparked the men running the channel to go out looking for her in the streets. They managed to find a man who claimed that the woman goes by Aurora and lives under a bridge across from him. He says that she has family in the area, but they don't have a good relationship, so she stays out in the streets. Sofia did have a dad who lives in Mexico. I don't believe they were able to find the woman during this search, however. May 8, 2021, Akaya Ya uploaded a video where they break down exactly what happened in their search for Sofia Juarez. They did not intentionally set out to find someone like this, and it seemed like a genuine call for help from the woman that they spoke to. They also explained how they were able to link the Sofia case with the woman. An officer from Kennewick Police Department reached out to them via Instagram. They did not take it seriously until they could confirm that it was an actual officer 
and they have been in contact since then. This case is now officially open again, and hopefully we can bring Sophia home soon, or at the very least confirm if this was in fact Sophia or not. A few days after this, on May 11, 2021, Kennewick police decided to release information they had kept from the public for 18 years regarding this case. According to a credible witness, on February 4, 2003, a girl matching Sophia's description was seen crying, being led towards an occupied van by a laughing boy who looked to be between the ages of 11 and 14. If this is true, that means Sophia was literally abducted by another child. Kennewick police want this person to know that they are still looking for them. This person was described as a Hispanic male with brown curly hair and big hands and would now be between the ages of 29 to 32. They also had a description for the van she may have been led to, a lighter colored service van with no side windows from the 1970s or 1980s. This is an ongoing investigation, so I will post any updates as soon as I see them. If you have any information about this, please reach out to authorities at 509-628-0333 or go to the link in the description to submit an anonymous tip. I want to make this a series of missing or murdered people from Washington State, so like and subscribe if you want more videos like this and follow me on Twitter if you want. Links are also in the description for sources I use for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.